Good morning, everybody. I'm Jonathan Perriente. Uh, well, in a little special scenery today, I'm at my alma mater, Brooklyn College, uh, doing a very special YouTube video here today. Joining me is the head coach of the defending CUNYAC champion, Brooklyn College Bulldogs, Alex Lang, joins me. And uh, coach, congratulations, first of all, on winning the CUNYAC title. I know it's been a very long journey 38 long years. Yeah. Well, I haven't been here all 38 years, uh, <laughs> but definitely, uh, you know, we we come really close to winning uh, some titles, and uh, last year was a special season. Mm -hmm. Seems like a long time ago at this point because we're right mm -hmm. back at it. You know, obviously trying to prepare, prepare this year's bunch to uh, have another shot, um, and uh, you know, we have a good good core group returning from last year, so they're confident, obviously, as you'd expect from a team that just came off a championship. Uh, but they also know that there's a lot of work that goes in from, you know, October through February and maybe March if you get there. So. Absolutely. So, Coach, going back to that CUNYAC title game, uh, I know you guys have been on that precipice for many years, not getting, getting to that title game, but just not quite getting able to go to over the mountaintop. You finally did this year. Uh, how long did it take kind of for the reality of winning that title to sink in? Or, has it, or is it still sinking in up to this day? Uh, you know, if you talk about it that way, it, 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 you know, as a coach, you, you really never let any ups or downs really affect your mental approach too much. Because mm -hmm. if you do, you know, <laughs> you'll, you'll really have a hard time moving forward. Uh, coaching, you know, is about leading the group. And you always have to be forward thinking always have to be looking forward so um so you know I celebrated obviously I enjoyed it and you know that very next week we got ready to try to play Cabrini in the NCAA tournament and then um you know when we lost to Cabrini you know obviously we were still very you know prideful and and and, and it was a good feeling knowing we'd won the conference championship but you're upset that you couldn't go for the NCAAs you know that loss stung but then you get right back to it, trying to prepare for next year. Mm -hmm. You know, we had our individual meetings that we have at the end of the season. We continue with our recruiting, you know, do any kind of preparation you need to do in the off season, ordering any sort of equipment, mm -hmm. you know, scheduling, doing all the things that prepare us for the next season. So, you know, it's, it's I don't walk around every day thinking like, <laughs> we are the champions and, <laughs> and um, you know, uh, you, you can't uh, as a coach, you know. Um, you know, maybe Karen, who was one of our seniors last <laughs> year, you know, she doesn't have to worry about this season. So maybe she just yeah. sits up six back every day and says, yeah, that was great. <laughs> um, knowing Karen, she's got other things on her mind as well. But, uh, but, but you know, uh, uh, we, we, we definitely cherish the fact that we won. But at the same time, we're looking forward to this year. And speaking of that, Coach, you, you won this title with a whole new core of players. This was... Definitely you had Karen Mack coming back for her final year at that year. You had Ali Mugen making her return. But you mainly had a trio of new talent. And the great thing is you have these players for the next couple of years to come here. Taylor George, Jasmine Henschen, and Chanel Jamat. Mm -hmm. The three of them played such a vital role in winning the CUNYAC title this past back in February. Talking about how important it is to have those three going forward going yeah. into 2018, 2019. Well, obviously they were a big part of what we did last year and they'll be they'll you know, all three will start on this year's team and Jasmine unfortunately is a senior. Uh we won't have her after this year, but the other two we will. Um but you know, we're we're looking at this year right now and obviously, you know, those three you mentioned along with Ali, um they'll uh they'll all be big contributors. Um Chanel uh obviously came off the bench last year for us. She was a, a tremendous player, I, you know, was the tournament MVP. She, she was someone who contributed big time in that championship game. But she was a big time player for us all season. Um, and she came off the bench, usually replacing Veronica Green. And Veronica was a defender for us, a really smart player, somebody who, who knew what we wanted to do out there. But Veronica wasn't really a big time scorer or, or like a real big time rebounder. So Chanel was pretty much our threat off the bench. This year she'll be more of a starting role. I think she can do the same thing, but um obviously, you know, um, you know, we're expecting even a better season from her this year. And going back one more time to the to last to this past season, at what point during the season did you feel 
hey, we may have something very special here, not knowing if it was going to lead to a CUNYAC title or not. But at what point during the season did you feel, I have a group that maybe can, can do some special things this season and yes. there's something different about maybe this team I've had than any other team I've coached in the that, past? That's a great question. So we started off um, conference play last year with a loss to Hunter. Uh, it was one of only two losses we had in conference the whole season. We went 14-2. and two. Um, And it was our very first conference game, and it was on the road. It was at Hunter. It was their homecoming. Um, you know, they, they obviously, um, you know, we, we've been one of the better teams in the conference, and we've had a lot of success over them over the years. So they, they really wanted to, to, you know, come out and play great in front of their home crowd and beat us, and, and they did. They, they played great. They, you know, we didn't play our best game, and, and they knocked us off. And, you know, I was a little upset with our, our focus that game, our intensity. Um, you know, as a coach, you always, you always expect a little more. Um, you know, we, we've had a lot of success in the conference, so we, we want to win every conference game. Uh, and starting out 0-1 is definitely not how we <laughs> anticipated it. Um, but, you know, these things happen, and, 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 you know, the credit went to Hunter, obviously, for playing a good game. And I told my team, I said, look, we got to turn this around and, and, and come back. And then we played a non-conference game the, the, to follow that up uh, the following, I think it was Tuesday, um, against NYU, and who has a very strong team. Um, and, you know, they've beaten us the last few years. And we came out at, at home and played our butts off and got the win uh, right after a tough loss. And, um, you know, that, that's the moment I said, all right, this team's got something. Because, um, it, you know, it would have been very easy to come back out say, all right, we're playing a really tough opponent, you know, give a marginal effort and maybe either play them tough or, or, or and lose or maybe even, you know, get, get, get your butts kicked a little bit. You know, we were a young team last year, but we came out and we played our, you know, our game and, and, and came out in our home gym and really impressed our fans. And, and I said, wow, this, this team's got something because, you know, we've had talent. Most mm -hmm. teams that are playing at a high level have a lot of talent. But sometimes it's more of the mental makeup and how much players want it and, and are they willing to, to set aside certain things and go out and give the effort that's needed. And, and our team showed that really early in the season. So. Speaking of talent, you're going to have uh, new players coming in this year. Uh, Karen Mack, of course, uh, has graduated from playing her senior year. Mm -hmm. Allie Mugen will come back for her senior year. Mm -hmm. And you keep the same core three that we just mentioned a little earlier. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about some of the new talent that's going to be coming in this year and what role they're going to play and what they can bring to the table for this season. Well, we've got a bunch of newcomers. Um, obviously, uh, we also have a few returnees that, that weren't starters last year who will play big roles. Um, and then we also have Kaylin Richburg who came come, right. come back uh, after being on the team two years ago, uh, suffered an injury, was set out last year. So she'll be back. We have Michelle Pena, mm. we have Sarafina Carter, we have Grace Martinez Espina. Um, all of which are going to give us some depth and, um, and, and you know, are going to play big roles on the team. Um, you know, Michelle and Kaylin will probably split time at the point guard position with one of them starting and, you know, the others will, will give us some minutes off the bench. Um, the, uh, the newcomers, uh, we have a few uh, very good players. Um, starting off with our transfers, I'd say Deanna. Rogers is a, a, a forward from uh, Mohawk Valley Community College, uh, come out of New Rochelle High School. And she's a very good player. She's got a great attitude. She's willing to work hard. She's a rebounder. She's someone who can score around the basket. She runs the floor well. Um, she'll defend. Uh, so we're very excited about her. She'll be able to add to our unit in the front court. Um, then um, we have another transfer, uh, Lauren Clark. Uh, she's a transfer from um, Division II school, Willing Jesuit, where she was there for one season. Didn't play a lot of minutes uh, in freshman year, but you know, gained some valuable experience. She's a local Brooklyn player who, um, who's a very talented player. Can shoot the three, can defend, um, can put it on the floor a little bit. She, she's got to learn some, some of our, um, you know, our way of doing things at Brooklyn College, and once she does that, I think she'll fit in very nicely. Um, you know, and and so those are two of our, our transfers. Uh, we have another transfer, Ardita, uh, who's from Kingsboro. Uh, she she probably won't see a ton of minutes um, right away, but she's an excellent shooter. 
Um, someone who's a, a very savvy half court player. Mm -hmm. uh, she can work a little more on her, her speed in the open court. Um, that's something that she'll have to work on to get minutes with us because we like to play fast, as you know, John. Um, and then, uh, you know, we have four freshmen. Uh, you know, we have uh, a couple of Staten Islanders, Alex mm -hmm. Arenas out of Moore Catholic, mm -hmm. and Kayla Trembone out of uh, Wagner. Uh, both are picking things up and, and should see some minutes for us. Um, Alex uh, is, is one of our better players uh, inside out. She can go around a basket and rebound. She can step out shoot the three. Uh, depending on how she picks things up, she can get a lot of minutes. Um, uh, like I said, Kayla, we have Tiffany Luong out of Seward Park High School. She's a, a, you know, a guard who can put the ball on the floor. She's a very creative passer. She, she's got a good mid-range jump shot. Strong. Got to work on her quickness a little bit more too, but, um, but she's someone who's going to be a good player for us as well. And then we have Kelly Teitler, who's a... Uh, um, she's you know six three post who's um, you know pretty raw and 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 needs a lot of work, mm -hmm. but um, she's shown the ability to pick things up really well and and it's gotten a lot better since the first day of practice. So we're excited about her too. Definitely seems like a, a very very bright promising team. We'll see for this coming year. You're also making some changes on the coaching standpoint as well. Yeah. Two very uh, important players uh, that you had, of course, you coached and became coaches. Brittany yes. Bowen, Vanessa D'Ambrosi. Uh, first, yeah. very nice for them to win a title yeah, before. Definitely. I know they weren't able to do that as players, but as coaches, I think it kind of means a whole lot more. Oh, yeah, yeah. And now you're going to have two new coaches uh, taking over this year, Caroline Gehring and a former player that I happen to call a few games for, Jamar Harry, yeah. who played for John Jay. John Talk Jay, to me yeah. about the, the two new additions of these two and what they're going to bring on the coaching front for this Bulldogs team. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously we're sad to lose Brittany and uh, NV. Um, they're both excellent players, like you pointed out, and uh, they did a great job on our coaching staff. Uh, you know, Vanessa was her first year with us last year. Brittany had been with us for a couple of years. But, um, you know, they, they, they uh, both knew my system, our system here at Brooklyn College. They both understand, you know, everything that, that we want to accomplish, and they were able to really help the players out big time. Uh, we have, you know, like you said, Carrie, uh, Caroline, we, you know, everybody calls her Carrie, Gehring, and uh, Jamal Harry. Uh, both are, you know, younger assistants that, you know, uh, Carrie's, you know, uh, pretty fresh out of college. Uh, Jamar is, is someone who uh, has a few years out, but, you know, they're both recent ball players, so, so they can still play the game and they, they can <laughs> yep. help out in practice doing, you know, showing some demonstrating some drills and helping out uh, in that regard. Uh, and I think they relate to the players well, and I think they're going to bring a lot of energy and, and, and some enthusiasm. Um, I think that they'll grow into their roles. Uh, it's always tough with new assistants because it kind of takes a little while for them to just understand the feel of the school, the program, the, you know, get, get, a, get a grip on the, the mental approach of some mm -hmm. of the players and, and, and what helps motivate them and what they need to work on. But uh, they've, they've been really good so far and uh, they'll be tremendous assets, I think, to our program. And going finally into, into this coming season, it's going to be a whole... Uh well, now coming off a CUNYAC title, you're going to be facing some of the tougher meat of the competition this year. Yeah. You're going to see Cabrini College, the very team you played in NCAA. You'll go to their place to play them. You're going to see Kane University again to start off the year. But one important game, uh, obviously you'll see Montclair uh, at Brooklyn College this year. But the one game that I'm really looking forward to is a December 1st game. Well, you know which team I'm talking about, <laughs> Amherst College, uh, somebody that Everybody who hasn't followed, uh, they have not lost a game in three years. Yeah. They're three-time defending NCAA champions. and I think it's two-time. Oh, two-time? Yeah, yeah. I think but, it was three. Well, whatever it was. But uh, Amherst it, has not lost a game in three years. And they're going to see a yeah. very tough team. Yeah, they, they, they're, they're, they've been undefeated for a long time. I think they have a 66-game winning streak or something like that. But, you know, I'm glad you're looking forward talk to, to it. Me about, yeah, talk <laughs> to me about these, about these particular games that you're going to have coming up. You're also going to go to California as well this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we have a very tough non-conference schedule. I mean, I Obviously, um, you know, we, we've done that year to year. We've had a lot, you know, we've played Montclair the last couple of years. We've played Kane. We've played, you know, some of the better teams in the region, NYU and, and Farmerdale and some other teams. Um, you know, we stepped it up even a little more this year. Um, you know, Cabrini, you know, just having a relationship with playing them last year and talking to their coaching staff, and she's actually on a committee I'm on as well. Oh, wow. You know, I decided, you know, it's a good team for us to play because they're going to be NCAA level. and. You know, we'd like to get back to the NCAAs, and we'd like to try to, you know, compete when we get there. Um, 
And I think the only way to really do that is to schedule some of the better teams sure. and try to go out and beat them. And, 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 you know, hopefully we can get a couple wins. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not um, getting into predictions at this point. <laughs> oh, not at all. Because we have a lot of work to do as a team. We have only had one scrimmage at this point. We've got a lot of work to do on our own game. Um, and, you know, we're just going to try to get out some, you know, get out there and get some wins. But, you know, obviously having had the success we've had not, uh, in the conference the last few years, we're pretty confident that we can, you know, be one of the better teams in the league. And we want to try to challenge ourselves in our non-conference schedule. Um, you know, Amherst is, is a little bit of a, a you know, it, it's good. You know, I'm glad you're looking forward to It's a tall to it, order. It's a... Yeah, it's, it's not, it's not, uh, they're not a team, obviously, where you can go into the game and and have much room for error, yeah. you know, because they're so good. You could play a really good game and still lose to them pretty handily because they're yeah. they're an excellent team. They beat yeah. teams in the NCAA tournament by large uh, margins. But, you know what, um, it's good for the team to see what the best looks like. Yes. Um, it's, 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 it's good to be able to measure yourself up against a team like that and, and tell yourself, hey, look, you know, if, if we go out and we compete with them, give ourselves a chance to win, that's great. If we don't, then we see, all right, this is how far away we are from that, and, and we've got to get back to work. And it's early in the season, so you know, we'll have a few months to, to get ready for the NCAA <laughs> tournament. Yeah. So finally, uh, and this is the last one before we uh, finish things here, you've now won two of the three parts of the Triple Crown. You've won the CUNYAC title, you've won the ECAC title, so now the trifecta is an NCAA title a realistic goal that you one day see this program uh, getting uh -oh. to one day? <laughs> hey, look, John, I, I, you're the only one calling it the trifecta <laughs> here. But, um, um, I have to bring this up. Obviously, you know, every team that, that plays, their ultimate goal would be to one day win a national championship. Um, is it realistic? I don't think it's necessarily realistic for anyone until you kind of, you know, get to the final four and, 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 and you know, get in the chance to win a national championship. Um, obviously, we're far away away from that in terms of last year we got knocked down in the NCAA first round. You know, but all we can do is continue to try to get better, try to challenge ourselves in our non-conference schedule. You know, I think we'll be able to tell from the way we play against some of these tougher opponents whether that's a realistic goal or not. Um, and, 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 you know, I, I don't think anybody at this point in the year – feels like they're ready to win a national championship. Um, it takes a lot of work. Some of these programs like Amherst, um, you know, they, they get to play on that sort of stage every year. So it's a little more realistic for a team like that because they've mm -hmm. been to multiple Final Fours. They've played for national championships. They've won national championships. Um, for me to sit here and say that that would be a realistic goal for us is, is a little bit tough at this point because we haven't gone that far into the NCAA tournament. But at the same time, I think you should go for you know you should aim for the for the for the top and aim, aim, aim you know why why limit yourself in terms of what you can dream for so obviously we we'd love to get there someday I'm not going to say that it's not realistic but at the same time it's 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 we've got a few steps to get to before we talk about national championships. Yeah. Coach Alex Lang, thank you so much for taking some time to join me and best of luck to your team as they defend their CUNYAC championship for 2018 2019. All right, thank you very much. Once again, the basketball broadcasts will resume next week. Brooklyn College will start their season. The women will play Kane University on November 13th. And we will have live YouTube coverage of all home games for the 2018-2019 season, as well as radio broadcasts via Spreaker.com. But for right now, I'm Jonathan Pariente, saying so long for now. Basketball returns next week.